over five years, it was the best kept secret in snowmobiling, a vehicle unlike anything the industry had ever seen. It would challenge conventional suspension design and not only shift the paradigm entirely, but forever change the game for Polaris. They called this snowmobile the Rush. Good afternoon, Polaris Industries. How may I help you? One moment, please. For over 55 years, Polaris had been capturing the hearts and minds of snowmobilers with legendary chassis such as the Indy and Edge, and through innovative front suspension technology such as the IQ. But Polaris's success in the market hit a roadblock in the winter of 2005, when their release of the Fusion 900 did not live up to consumer expectations. Polaris owners began looking at other brands and their more modern rider forward product offerings. During the first five, six, seven years that I worked for Polaris, we were number one in snowmobiles. And it was almost like it was an expectation that we would be the market share leader in snowmobiles, that we would be the innovator in snowmobiles. Um, and you almost took it for granted. And we went through a fairly rough patch including Fusion, um, where we lost some significant market share. We probably, most importantly, we disappointed our customers with not having the right product that met their needs. And that's not something we were used to at Polaris. I knew that we needed something different. We needed to change the trajectory. It wasn't going to be just making the IQ chassis better or, you know, tweaking the engine or something like that. We need something radical, something different, something that people weren't doing right now. For Polaris, this meant going back to the basics and re-exploring the marketplace to identify the needs of modern snowmobilers. What became apparent was that current rear suspension designs had become the limiting factor in performance. For the snow division and its new leader, the challenge was, where do we start? There's lots of internal experts in Polaris on snowmobiles. In fact, most people think they're an expert on snowmobiles within Polaris. Um, lots of passion around what you should do with snowmobiles. And I took the opportunity and I talked to as many of those experts as I possibly could. And Jeff Bjorkman was our Vice President of Operations at the time. And Jeff's an avid snowmobiler, he's a racer, he's more passionate about snowmobiles than anything else Polaris makes. Jeff told me, you know, there's this technology that we're working on that you might want to take a look at that I think has the potential to change the game for you in snowmobiles. And it was this progressive rear suspension technology that the guys had been kicking around on a computer. There'd been nothing built. We didn't even really know if we could do it. It was all just computer models at the time. And half the group would say, ah, that's just 21st, 22nd century stuff. You're never gonna be able to do that. And the other half would say, I think there's something here. I'm not quite sure if it's gonna work, but it feels like there's something that we can possibly do. Um, and that was the one where I just kind of zeroed in on that and said, we gotta figure this out. I think this is where the opportunity lies. In the latter part of 2003, a team of two Polaris engineers named Tim Giese and Brett Gass had been working on an exploratory project. The project was focused on the development of a truly progressive rate snowmobile suspension. The challenge had always been designing a suspension to combat the regressive rate properties tied to conventional in-skid designs. True progressive rate is actually the curve that, uh, that the suspension geometry, both the suspension and spring geometry gives the, the customer. That true progressive rate means it start, starts out soft and gets stiffer and stiffer as it goes through its ride range. 
Uh, what we see with conventional rear suspensions is it will get part way through its ride range, it will get very stiff and actually show us some portion of a progressive rate, but then it falls off dramatically. And we, we try, to, try to spring the suspension or, or valve the suspension stiffer to try to overcome that rate. And that's why uh, most consumers have so many problems trying to get their rear suspension dialed in correctly because you're trying to deal with many different levers and try to adjust different things on the suspension to try to overcome that force. And each time you do that, there's a trade-off. You either give up one part of your ride and not the other, uh, you just can't get it tuned in as well as you can with the true progressive rate. To help them achieve their goal, they turn to a new form of engineering software recently employed by Polaris called Vehicle Dynamic Modeling. Basically what Vehicle Dynamic Modeling software allows you to do is create a virtual world in the computer where you're actually driving the vehicle or riding the vehicle in a sense. So what we do is we'll go out and we'll put a lot of sensors on a current vehicle and we'll ride it and take a bunch of information, a bunch of data from that and then we'll use that information, the loads and the forces on the vehicle to, as inputs to the model in the computer. So you could actually uh, see in some of our scenarios, you can see a, a vehicle uh, going through uh, different terrain and jumping, you know, like in a snow cross course. And you can, you can put a person on it and a weight and you can see how the vehicle is going to um, accelerate and how it will land and how the suspension articulates when it hits certain types of bumps. So it allows you to actually um, create a test world you know, in the computer. So when we start um, building the hardware and actually building prototypes, uh, it gets very expensive very quickly. So we try to iterate through and get the best design we can uh, before we start prototyping. Um, for this particular project, you know, I, I, one of the numbers we talk about is the number of builds, virtual builds we conducted. So I believe we're over 50 different variants of uh, the suspension architecture. Um, some of them wildly different than what we see today but we were able to evolve our suspension uh, design very quickly in the virtual world um, before we started uh, bending tube and cutting steel. As design work progressed, the project started to evolve into its own platform and became known as the Fat Man. If you remember back to World War II, the, uh, the two uh, atomic bombs that were dropped the first time were called Fat Man and Little Boy. And so uh, Fat Man came from the uh, dropping the big bomb, I guess is really where it came from. So when the guys figured out we could actually do the progressive rate suspension, they said this is going to be a big one, and they wanted to drop it. So <laughs> that's really where it comes from. 